Welcome to the Research Process Explained. This is the video that I'm most excited to make because it's really going to just kind of take you through the process of writing really good copy kind of from A to Z. Again, not going into the details of how to write copy. This is this whole course is about how to get better at the, at the process. In the future, I may release more courses around writing copy particularly, but this one's just about improving efficiency and all that. So let's really just dive in and explain the research pr uh, process and kind of like the phases that you go through when you research and create this converting copy. All right, so the five phases of copy creation. All right, I, I you see the picture there of the doctors. The reason for that is my acronym. I'm a real acronym junkie. So it, the acronym is Doc Doctor. So it's D O C D R, Doc Doctor. So you can always remember that. You know, hey, Doc Doc Doctor. Um, so what does that mean? These are the five phases of copy creation. You have the discover phase. You have the organize phase. You have the construct phase. Then a deconstruct and a reconstruct. So a lot of like building up, tearing down, building up, and that is the phases of copy creation. We're going to go through each one real quick here. So under the discover phase, what you're going to do is this is like brute force exposure. Okay, I really believe this. I've done this a lot, and I think that a lot of times you you got to start writing copy well you, before you ever even think about writing copy you've got to just expose yourself to a new area so if you already have experience in a certain field that's fine and you probably don't you could probably skip over the brute force uh, exposure but if you get assigned to write copy for a project and it's like a whole new project that you haven't ever dealt with or a whole new industry or niche you've got to do brute force exposure okay because you need to expose yourself to the terminology, to the words, of course, to the to the way people talk, to the way people feel, to the problems of the of that group. There's so many things that you just don't even know yet. So you really want to start there. And what what you do is you go deep and you go wide in this form of ex exploration. So you really want to go deep, as I said, to learn the language. How do they talk? What do they say? Are there phrases like if you're in marketing industry like you'll be familiar with phrases like ppc and cpa and um you know uh, ecpm right there are all these phrases that people in the industry use and if you're not in that space you're not even going to know what that means so you have to learn to talk like how they talk so yeah that's why you have to go deep but you also have to go wide because you want to find as many topics and ideas that you can. And the wider you go, the more you'll cross into other industries, which you can then pick and choose and bring things from different areas into your copy. That's one of the greatest things that you can do to really be creative is to apply different fields to your new industry. So fields of research and discovery that have been found out in other um, industries you can actually bring those ideas and concepts to your industry and, and do a lot of uh, very, very uh, big things. And people will think you're super creative when really all you did was just apply an, exi an existing idea to a, new, to a new problem. So this is a big key here too. You don't have to start saving things yet. You don't have to start writing notes down and, and all that. You, you can if you want to, and if you do, fine. It's, it's not gonna hurt you. But what you want to really do is before you start saving too many things, you want to make sure that what you're that you're going to learn the right things, right? Because you don't know what you don't even know. You're, you're unaware, blissfully unaware. So you don't know what you should save, what you should not save. So um, I usually like to read a book or two in that space or go through articles in, in that field and look for trends. And then I'll go through a third one and then I'll start to save things that I see that are starting to repeat. Again, if it's good and, and it resonates, the key to this whole thing is you want it to resonate with you at that time. If it resonates, save it, okay? So once you know what's important, then you can start taking notes. And that's what brings us to the organize and collect phase, okay? So this is where you're gonna start to actually highlight and notate 
notes. And this will be things that you read, that you watch, that you listen to. There's so many mediums in order to, to get info in that you, you want to make sure that you're keeping it in, you know, you're keeping yourself open to exploring different mediums. So don't just read articles. Try to go through audiobooks, try to play podcasts, look for YouTube interviews, look for YouTube uh, testimonials or people that are vlogging about whatever problem they're going through and you can probably get a lot from that. So what you wanna do though is you wanna to begin to save bits of information here and things that seem important. This is where we talked about starting to create those atomic notes, right? Things that, you know, that, are, that are tight, that give you more info that that you could use in the future when you're writing copy not just for this project but also for future projects and whenever possible whenever possible add your own thoughts like that's so important add your own thoughts when you add your own thoughts you really start to grow and you start to really learn it you really start to figure it out when you can write it in your own words now a thing that i recommend this is really part of the copywriter brain process is you want to create tags for material so ha like the hashtag and then the word or the phrase that, that you want to be able to find it because this will make all the notes that you take searchable in the future in the Rome database so you don't have to be putting all this in a Google Doc that you will never see again right this is the coolest part of this whole program is that as you write notes, you can tag those notes so you can find them again and again and again in the future. And again, people ask me a lot when they're doing copy research, how much should I do? Is too much? Is, is it not enough? Feel free to collect as little or as much as you want. It's, it's really up to you, but you do want to make sure that it resonates with you. I'll say that again, it has to resonate with you at the time and that's kind of like it's a little weird i'm a very logical guy but i do think there is something to that sort of spidey sense of this resonates with me i want it right now you know um and again we've talked about the idea of content versus context so make sure that there's enough content there that it makes sense not so much that you're overwhelmed and make sure that the context is well explained um Back in the day, I was on a, a, a weight loss show and one of the things that, that they would do, they would ask us questions. Like in the interview, they would say, um, so ha did you have a great time on the, on the TV show? And if my answer was yes, well, they don't put the questions on the show. So all they would have would be a clip of me saying yes. See, there's zero context there. So my response, my answer would always have to be, I had a great time on the show. I'm so glad to get to be here. Then they can use that because there's context there. So think about that when you write your notes, you want to be as detailed as you can with the context of where those notes were discovered at. Um, and depending upon how you use these, right, these notes, this is where you can start to build your conscious brain, which are notes that you're gonna use for this project, and your subconscious brain, which are notes that you're gonna use in the future or that are maybe more raw, that are not, per, perhaps are not processed yet. And that's okay. You know, that just like your real brain, you've got your conscious mind, you've got your subconscious, we're doing the same thing with our notes and the way that we take them. So now we move on to the construct phase. So at this point, you have a bunch of notes, a bunch of research, you've just kind of piled it in, it's all in your own database, there's a ton of stuff, there's tags in there but what you want to do now is you want to start going through and cleaning up those notes and you want to start to organize them um, the this is a tip just the sooner you can clean up raw notes the better because you want it to be fresh in 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 your mind because you'll be like oh yeah I saved this because of that and I want to tweak this some or I want to rewrite this now or I want to change it or take it out if you wait like a like a week or two you may not even remember why you save something and, and that's bad. You want to take advantage of your brain while you got it. I'm um, thinking, think like a chef. There's this kind of school of thought in, you know, with as you clean as you go, you know, you, as long as if you don't, you start piling up and you start getting problems and your efficiency drops. So you can do research for a few hours, take a break and clean it up. Do some more research, clean it up. You don't have to wait to the very end where you have a hundred pages, it becomes a very daunting task. So one thing that I've learned 
in the in the last probably six months is is to turn things into smaller tasks don't try to create these massive projects that have to be done in a single day um, that's how I'm naturally geared but it doesn't always do the best because then you kind of want to you resist it because the the volume becomes almost overwhelming so if instead you can set aside an hour or two per day to do your research and you know and maybe an hour or two to clean it up if you do that for for a, a week you've put in a good 20 or 30 hours and you're gonna have great great research and because you're doing it the copywriter brain way it's not lost you you have that research now forever and you'll be able to use it again and again all right so again make sure too that that you rewrite any direct quotes in your own words so if you took a direct quote that you think you might use in the copy if you're not going to quote it and reference who you got it from you need to rewrite it in your own words so you can use it so after you construct what's next well i want to just quickly show you one quick thing um, this is one of my new people that i just love his name is professor Feynman. I believe he passed away many years ago now but just was a super smart guy and he talked about the importance of writing things down and he said that basically when you write things down um, that's really the best way to learn is you begin by saying okay well what is it that I, that I want to learn what is it I want to take away so when you're beginning to do your research you could even write to yourself and say I want to know why people um, have this problem and I want to know how we can solve this problem whatever it might be right if you do that you can then tell your brain to be on the hunt to find that stuff and then what you want to do as you're doing your research you want to answer those questions that you've asked yourself in your own words and you want to describe them in a way that a 10 year old could read it and understand it it could be a technique it could be an idea it could be a, a problem whatever write it down and explain it how to solve it in the most basic way and as copywriters we know if we can write to a 10 year old and they understand it that a copy will be powerful and more importantly you're going to now have it in your brain and you're going to understand it probably for the rest of your life because once you can teach something that's the hack on how you learn it um, you also want to look for connections like what is does this tie to what you know where else what else have i learned where maybe this piece of knowledge could could tie into it and you want to look for metaphors and similes to help you better describe it because again it's all about making it simple all right let's talk about how to deconstruct so you're going to break down larger ideas now and this is the next phase you've kind of built up all this knowledge notes and all these things but now we're going to break them down we're going to break down these larger ideas into smaller pieces or chunks or bullet points even and I, I call these knowledge bullets, okay? Because you can use them again and again and again. You want to make the note atomic. So think about like one central idea, maybe one noun, one verb. This is more for the deconstruct phase. Um, and you want to deconstruct your ideas from a variety of sources. Uh, that means like, again, being, we talked, we talked about going, going wide. Because the more fields you can pull from, the more creative your copy will be. Because you could say, that's like an airplane, or that's like a boat, that's like gardening, right? You're looking always for similes and metaphors to make things understandable and graspable by the average person, all right? So you want to continue to deconstruct and deconstruct. In a second, I'll show you an image to help you kind of visualize this. But this also ties into the idea of first principles thinking, which I'm just going to read what it says here. But a first principle is a foundational proposition or assumption that stands alone. So like you want to continually to kind of peel back the onion until you get to the center. So you get to that first principle that starts the whole entire thing. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this incredibly to write good copy, but it definitely helps to think about why you just keep asking why. So they have this problem, why? Well, they have that, why? And they have this, well, why? And you want to keep asking and asking until you get to the first principle, which is the root cause or the, you know, the, the root problem that causes the whole issue, right? Um, you know, even Aristotle actually talked about the idea of first principles. You know, he, he connected the idea of knowledge and he defined first principles as the first basis from which a thing is known. So it is 
kind of a cool thing to do as you deconstruct. So here's how that looks like. You see like, you see there's this big triangle, but you can break that big triangle down into smaller triangles and you can break them down into, you know, how many triangles are in this image, right? I don't even know, but I think it's a lot more than you think it, it is because you can break it down to its most bare piece or look at the bigger, bigger picture. So I firmly believe that great copy is created by going from the ground up, not from top down, but from ground up. So you do your research and you let your research build the pyramid of which your copy will be built on. All right. And that brings us to the last phase, which is kind of the reconstruct and the rewrite phase. It's important that you let some time go by here. So as an after period of thinking, this should give your subconscious mind time to work through connections. And then you can start reviewing all of your deconstructed notes now. And what you want to start to do is look for big ideas, headlines, leads. And again, you can create these as you go. It's like as you're there, maybe you're deconstructing big thoughts into headlines or into leads or into um, a unique mechanism, a unique problem, an emotional story, right? And, and cool part is you're tagging these two as you go so they're easy to find. This is what you want to be able to do. You've got all this great research. It's tagged properly, not just for your current use, but for your future use. And at this point, you actually start to write your copy. This is it. This is where the rubber meets the road. You're going to use maybe one of your favorite templates or something you've done before, but you start to fill out the copy. This is the copy writing portion of the copy writing, you know, uh, process. And cool part is, as you do this, you're going to build up and you're going to have pre-done copy that you can pull from again and again. So you can write closes and all these guarantees, different stories, different uh, analogies, things that you can use over and over again. You're building up this just massive amount of great of great info. And again, this is all going to happen inside of Rome, which we'll get there soon. I know I keep saying that, but we, there's a lot to this program and I hope you're enjoying it. I hope I'm doing a decent job of explaining it. It is a little bit tough because there's so much to it. So what we're going to do next is I'm, I'm, I'm pivoting some. I, I, I was going to dive into the tech stack of how to do all this, but I, I want to kind of go over what copywriters research and maybe where you could look for research. And then um, then next we'll go into the tech stack after this. So in part four, we'll go over what copywriters research. So you kind of know what to look for as you begin to conduct your research. I'll see you in the next video.